Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blaze Baking with Rach. I'm so happy to be here with our very special guest, streaming all the way from England, Leah Hisla. Welcome, Leah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're so happy to have her. We were just saying, what time is it over there? It's evening time already. So thank you for coming in. You're most um, welcome. Yes. Today, we're going to be making Lonesome Tonight brownies from Leah's wonderful new book, The Brownie Diaries. And the sort of tagline is, in order to make these, you need peanut butter, check. Oreos, check. That's a lot of and Oreos. <laughs> a lot of Oreos and all the feels. So um, before we get started, um, I am going to say a little bit about the blaze and then introduce Leah with her official bio. And then we're going to get baking and um, we're going to talk to Leah along the way because I have a lot of questions for her about brownies in general and these specific brownies. So if you're new to Blaze Baking with Rach, welcome. If you're new to A Mighty Blaze, welcome. Blaze is a uh, team of, I think we're 35 plus now, creative professional volunteers dedicated to getting the word out there about books and authors and independent bookstores. And by the way, today in America, is Independent Bookstore Day. So once you're done making these brownies, head out to your favorite independent bookshop and maybe bring them some of the brownies. Maybe they're feeling a little lonesome. Um, so, um, and we have a whole lineup of weekly programming, monthly programming. Um, and I am Rach, the Rach behind The Baking Show. And every couple weeks I interview cookbook authors and all kinds of authors as we bake together. So I'm so thrilled to introduce Leah, and I'm going to put on my glasses to read her bio. Leah is a food writer and editor. She is a lifestyle editor at The Telegraph. She was a lifestyle editor, excuse me, at The Telegraph and then food director of Sainsbury's Magazine before coming, becoming deputy editor at Weight Rose and Partners Food Magazine. We were just talking about that. Her first book, Made in London, was published in 2018. Leah now lives just outside of the city and is still finding brownie crumbs all over the house. <laughs> True and story. you can follow Leah on Instagram and Twitter at Leah Hisla. Welcome. Hi. Well, thanks for being here. We're so happy you're here. I'm very happy to be here too. Yeah. And you were saying this book came out in, um, in England in February, I believe, and more recently in the US. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wrote it kind of at the start of the pandemic. So it's been quite a long time coming. Um, and it was a strange time to write a book. I am sure. How was that writing the book during the pandemic? Kind of. So it was our first lockdown that we had here in the UK. So it was a weird experience because usually when you develop recipes and you're, you're kind of constantly giving them to people, you know, I take them into work and I kind of share them with family and friends and you get all that feedback, which is so useful. Um, but it was just me and my husband in the house just eating brownie <laughs> after brownie being like, is this good? I don't really know anymore. That sounds amazing. So, yeah, we did gain a lot of weight. I'm uh, not going to lie. <laughs> Did you have trouble getting ingredients early on in the pandemic? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, flour, eggs. It was, yeah, a little bit tricky for a time. But um, yeah, we got through it. Yeah. So what inspired you to write a book completely based on brownies in the Brownie Diaries? Well, I've always loved brownies. I think they've always been really dear to me. And when I when I looked at life, I could kind of see moments where brownies had been important in some way. You know, I could kind of think like, oh, I kind of making that one when I got that job or this one when I broke up with someone. Um, so I love brownies, but I also think they are, that's something that most people like. They're, they're, and they're kind of a connective force. You know, you never make brownies just for yourself, really, do you? You make them for, for other people. They're, they're so shareable. Um, and there's very few people that don't want to eat a brownie. So I think that was why I did it. But also they're just really fun as a blank canvas, you know, as a, as a cook. Chocolate yeah. goes with so many flavors, you can take it in so many directions. So actually, you know, although it's quite intimidating to start a book like that, where you sit down and think, I need to come up with 52 different recipes for brownies. Um, it's actually really, it was really fun, kind of all the different right. flavors you could, you could go down. And I have to say the names in the book are so great. Um, there's one called like <laughs> Netflix and Chili Brownies. Um, I think there's one called Gen Gentlemen Prefer Blondies Brownies. Yeah. I, um, how was it? I, and what we're going to make, which we're going to get started on are Lonesome Tonight Brownies. So was it fun coming up with the names and how did you do that? It was. I mean, I, I, I think kind of talked about this book about as being like brownies for every mood and moment. So yeah. I kind of wanted the, the titles to be quite... Um, 
kind of emotive, I guess, quite evocative, you know, so not just the flavors, but like, how does that brownie make you feel and what kind of time would you want to eat that brownie? Um, so that, that was the idea of that. Yeah, well, um, speaking of times you want to make brownies, we'll get started. Um, we're making Lonesome Tonight brownies, which yeah. um, your publicist, I was saying, Emily, who's so lovely, gave me a list of possibilities. And when I saw Lonesome Tonight brownies, I was like, we are making this because <laughs> who does love a brownie with tons of chocolate, Oreos and peanut butter. And it's sort of, you know, the, the tagline or sort of the notion behind it is like, when you're feeling lonely, if, I don't know, if somebody, if you were recently dumped or if you're just sad yeah. or having one of those moments, these kind of make you feel better. And of course, peanut butter, lonesome tonight, Elvis, we got all the feels going on, right? Yeah, yeah. And there, um, it was important to me that this one was kind of store cupboard ingredients because I kind of felt like when you're in that mood, you don't really want to go to the shops. So it was like, peanut butter you're probably going to have in the cupboard oreos so it's it's like a real yeah kind of kitchen raid vibe going on well for those of us who are baking with us at home and by the way this video is going to live on on youtube so if you want to just watch today and come back and bake with us you certainly can but um to start off um you're going to preheat your oven to 350 um and you're going to grease i did a lot of this ahead of time you're going to grease an eight by eight brownie tin with some butter, which I did, and put some parchment paper, right? And the parchment paper is always very helpful in baking brownies, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to, you know, not do it, but it's worth it. <laughs> I know, because at the end, I've had so many brownie fails where you're like, oh, it's stuck in there and you can't get it out. So yeah, it's well worth doing. And I love the look of it as well, you know, the kind of, especially the way you've done it, where it's like a little bit crumply around the edges. I just think yes. it's so nice. That's my look, I guess. Not such a perfectionist. Yeah, um, that's exactly how mine would look as well. To make the chocolate, I already did this ahead of time too, you do, and I converted the measurements from the metric system to what we do in the US. Because well done, that's a challenge. <laughs> um, so it was three quarters of a cup of butter and one and a quarter cup of dark chocolate, which I just melted over the stove, which was so easy to do. And you know, there's something really good when you're using that real rich dark chocolate as opposed to you know, the chocolate from a, a mix, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. My chocolate, my, yeah, my brownies tend to have dark chocolate in because, yeah, I just think it makes such a difference. And I love doing it in that method with the pan. You know, a lot of time people put like the bowl over the hot water and kind of melt the butter and sugar. I can never really be bothered with that. So it's right. always. Or in the microwave. Yeah. Yep. Or, yeah. But for me, just putting it in the pan is like, you know, as long as you don't have it on too high a heat, I think it's fine. Right. So for people doing that at home, you can put it on the low heat and then let it sit for five minutes, right? Yeah, you don't want it too hot because you're going to put eggs in and then you don't want them to split. So yeah, it's, it's important to let it cool for a little while. Okay, well, while it's while people are cooling, um, we st I mentioned box mixes a little bit. I remember reading in your book, you said that um, sort of brownies became really famous, I guess, in the US when the box mixes came out. Was that a big trend? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, those companies you have like, um, interestingly, like in the UK, we don't have that kind of culture of box brownies in the same way. Um, I mean, you probably can buy a packet mix, but they don't have the same kind of like resonance or kind of um, kind of nostalgia for us. Um, but I think, you know, those companies that made those box mixes for you guys, like Pillsbury and stuff, like they really marketed it. It was partly a marketing thing, right? You know, they were like, right. hey, you can have brownies really quickly. Um, right. Yeah. So it's an interesting difference between the UK and the US, I think, because, yeah. I think actually our taste in brownies in the UK is maybe like slightly darker chocolate than maybe American is. And I think it's because of that box brownie thing. Like that's maybe what you guys grew up with. Probably. And you, 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 there's a section in your book about um, cakey versus fudgy brownies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The great war. And I, I think I'm more of a fudgy brownie kind of person. I think you are too. Is that uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people are, but I do say in the book, you know, I think there's a place for all of them, right? Like, uh, you know, sometimes a cakey brownie, you want something a bit kind of lighter. There's a place right. for it in, in, in life. And then, and then there's the third category, chewy, which I think gets a bit, you know, <laughs> get forgotten yeah. about, which is also important. And also you mentioned, and I think this is so true, there's some people who prefer um, an edge piece or a corner piece. I love a yeah. corner piece. Or yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. people who prefer the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fudge, fudgy middle. Yeah. You, you can even yeah. buy a pan, can't you? Have you seen that pan called the edge yes. pan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everyone gets an edge piece. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so our other steps we're going to do, we're kind, we kind of have a few mixtures here. So just to keep everybody on track, we also have the peanut butter mixture, right? So mm -hmm. the peanut butter mixture, you say in your recipe to use crunchy peanut butter. Can you also use um, smooth peanut butter? 
Yeah, you absolutely could. I just prefer crunchy because I like those kind okay. of little crunchy bits, but you could well, 100% use I smooth. I prefer smooth. <laughs> no, use whatever you have in the cupboard. It would be my top tip. Right, which is what I had. So <laughs> in that, in this bowl, in this glass bowl, I did three quarter cup of the peanut butter, um, a half a cup of sugar and a large egg. So whisk that together. This really is a very easy recipe, isn't it? Yeah, I really wanted all the recipes to be easy. I just felt, you know, like life is life is busy enough. Yeah, for sure. So we have that. I'm going to go through the rest of the ingredients too. The other, the part of the um, recipe that, so you have your peanut butter layer, which is going to go separate. You have your Oreos, which is another layer. And in the, the main sort of brownie part I've already done, I did three eggs, um, a cup of sugar, and um, we're going to add the chocolate to that, right? Mm-hmm. So this was really easy to do, the three eggs. I was telling you before, I actually cracked my eggs before just because I like to move things along and we don't need to watch me get a shell in the bowl. <laughs> I'm impressed, it's very slick. Yeah. So into the three eggs and the one cup of sugar, we're now gonna add our chocolate mix. And I wish you guys, I always said, I wish there was some kind of smell cam. Yeah, 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 smell vision How good this looks. So I'm gonna add the chocolate in here. You guys can see this, yeah. Um, and I just use like chocolate, dark chocolate chunks. I don't even know what percent chocolate it was. I don't think you have to necessarily go with that. Um, so we're going to mix that up and then we're going to add to that the cup of um, flour, which I've already mixed with the half a teaspoon of salt. It's really crucial. A simple the, the salt. recipe. Yeah, it is simple. But don't forget yeah. the salt. The salt is always important, I think. The no, salt the is the key. Recipe. I know I have a cookie recipe, which is kind of, we kind of launched the show, uh, the baking show a year and a half ago. And the key ingredient to those cookies is a little bit of salt. Cause I think people like salty things in their um, sweet things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some people don't realize they, they think adding salt to baking is strange, but it, it brings all the flavors together. So amazingly. And with chocolate, especially, I think salt is really good. I don't know what it is about it, but that combination yeah. is. So I, I sort of have my chocolate base and my peanut butter and the Oreos ready to go. I wanted to ask you, you, you talked about how you had 52 recipes in here. What, like, how do you develop all these different recipes? Do you have, like, for, I mean, you have your outline, right? That it's, that's going to be brownies, but how do you come up with so many different brownie recipes that you think are going to be popular or that people are going to relate to? Like, tell me about that process. Yeah. So like I said, I kind of started with moods in some way. So I kind of thought about like, what would you want if you know, you'd just fallen in love and you wanted to, to give someone a brownie. And I was like, oh, maybe like red velvet, cheesecake, raspberries, you know. So I did a lot of thinking along that route. Um, sometimes kind of flavor combinations, you know, that I just really wanted to do. I'd kind of work from those. I remember thinking, you know, um, there's one in there called um, Dreaming of Scotland, which is like whiskey shortbread kind of all the lovely Scottish things um and that one was because I was kind of thinking about going on holiday to Scotland and I was like oh all those flavors are so good and maybe they'd work in a brownie um but yeah I mean some of the kind of classic pairings there's a bait you know there's a maple syrup and bacon one in there that's the hangover yes. brownie um and then some of them are a bit more unusual I've got one with kind of apricot and thyme um I think not everyone always thinks of using savory herbs in baking like thyme but they can be really nice um, right because not everything has chocolate in either too right you have yeah 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 um, I, I've got lots of blondies. I, I decided that blondies would, would count in the book. Um, so yeah, lots of blondies in there too. And I really grew to love blondies, actually. I always thought I was a brownie person, but yeah, the, the blondies have, have won me over through a lot of testing. I think I a, good blondie, blondies. a good yeah. blondie really showcases butter, doesn't it? I think fundamentally it has that yeah, delicious yeah. buttery taste. So if you like butter, blondies are... Our producer um, behind the scenes, Michelle, asked me before we went on... Um, are there any healthy recipes in here? And I said, there, there are a few, I mean, there's a, there's like a, I think there's a vegan one and there's one it's called on a diet, still one brownies brownie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that, that is a lot lower calorie than your conventional brownie recipe. And that uses squash um, because I tried loads of different things. I mean, people use all sorts of stuff like chickpeas and, and black beans. And I tried all of those, but I could always taste that kind of, yeah, pulsy <laughs> undernote. Yeah. Um, but butternut squash, um, squash works really well. I guess pumpkin would work really well as well, actually, a tin pumpkin if you had it. Um, yeah, it kind of just, it, it's kind of sweet and, but, but doesn't overwhelm any of the other flavors. It kind of melts in really nicely. Um, right. So that's a good trick if you want to do a slightly, a slightly healthier brownie. What happened to the failed recipes? Were there, like, what <laughs> happened, are, are, there are there versions of the ones that you um, 
They yeah. Just, I mean, yeah. there are definitely ones that just didn't make it into the book because I was like, you know what, this is this is just not working for me. Right. And there are other ones that did make it in, but had to go through a lot of tests. There's one in there with blackberries in it, actually, which I tested so many times because when anything that uses soft fruit or fruit it is quite hard in a brownie, I think, because they're so moist that when you start yeah. adding kind of wet fruit to something, then it, it gets tricky. But I, I did make that one work in the end. <laughs> I know. I just, I think that sounds like the coolest job in the world to, well, I mean, I love writing and I love baking. So to write baking books, it sounds amazing, but the recipe testing I'm sure is like pretty involved. It, right? it is intensive. And you know, you do beat yourself up sometimes. You're like, Oh, I've done this one four times. When will it, when will it work? Um, will it but work? it is really satisfying when you, when you crack one, it is, it is really satisfying. Because it really is there. It, there's it's science. I mean, there's definitely a science. Yeah. Behind it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It is definitely the most scientific of, um, but, you know, sometimes you follow the science and it still doesn't work. You know, sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith on something and think, ah, oh, you know what, I'll just try a bit of baking powder and, you know, something magical might happen. So right. it's art and a science, I'd say. That is awesome. All right. Well, so speaking of the actual process, should we go ahead and yeah, yeah. create our layers? So we're going to, hang on, I'm reading my notes here. Um, <laughs> we have everything together. So, um, First, our first layer is going to be the the brownie layer, right? Yeah, yeah. So just kind of like half the batter goes in, basically. Which half gives you a nice of it goes at the bottom of the pan. Yeah, okay. that gives you a nice kind of base. Okay. It smells so good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I love um, that smell. And everyone at the Blaze is always like, who's going to, wh who, when do I get the brownies? So I said I would say <laughs> to Jenna, who sometimes co-hosts with me and is the co-founder of the Blaze. So she gets these. These will be sent to Jenna in the mail. <laughs> Because and who gets the bowl at the end is also an important my thing. my kids <laughs> teenage kids who still lick the bowl <laughs> they're good at that okay so i did okay about a half yeah half that's perfect half. right done that like a pro nice mm -hmm. thanks and next are we doing the um peanut butter the peanut so butter. yeah oh. you're basically using a teaspoon or a small spoon to kind of just like dollop little little dollops basically Okay, so I, I I thought that was interesting. You're not spreading the peanut butter across. You're just doing no, it. yeah. Right. This is kind of how I I found it worked quite nicely. So yeah, little dollops and kind of all over it. Okay, my hands are clean. I'm using doing like this. I mean, you could do it as a layer, I suppose, but I quite like it when you get a kind of uneven little burst in your brownie. And I'll use all of the peanut butter mix here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> just checking the recipe, but yes. This reminds me of a recipe actually um, of my mother-in-law's where she made um, their cheesecake brownies. Ooh, so nice. it's the brownie base and then you put the cheese, um, like the cream cheese mixture on top and then you, you sort of put it in dollops and then you kind of marbleize it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just find that, I find that easier than kind of, and I think I tried that by doing like the, all the brownie mix and then putting the peanut butter and then swirling it. But I found this method a little bit easier when I was, when yes. I was practicing. Um, I actually need to grab a knife. I don't have that. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to use the other end of the spoon. That so I have that in here. This looks so good. I love chocolate and peanut butter. Do it okay? Great combo. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh. Should I try to marbleize it now? No. So what I would do next is get your chocolate batter and kind of dollop it in between almost. And then okay. you're going to cover it. So on well, top of it or kind of around it? Uh, kind of around it mostly. Okay. It's quite hard, quite hard to direct this, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I like having, yeah. fun. you're the one that invented the recipe. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, your... filling, filling in the gaps, essentially. Filling in the but it gaps. doesn't, it doesn't matter if a little bit goes over, obviously. It's right. like all my recipes are pretty, pretty rustic. <laughs> right. Well, I think with brownies too, and this is sort of in the book a little bit, there, there are, there is room for error. It doesn't have to be perfect. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I always think there's not really such a thing as a bad brownie. A home cooked brownie is, is a nice thing. Because is it true that brownies were started as kind of a mis like a fail, a failed cake? Yeah, that's that's one of the stories. There's quite a few different stories, but yeah, one I quite like is that some uh, this this woman somewhere in America was like making you know her dinner party dessert, and she like right. you know made a mistake. She left out the baking powder or used the wrong flour, and then kind of came out looking a bit sunken. But she served it to her guests, and everyone was like, "I need the recipe for this," and the brownie was born. So I like that story. I don't know how true it is, but I like it. Right. So for those, for people who are watching in the Brownie Diaries, in addition to having the, you know, 52 recipes, there are so, there's a lot on 
sort of like methods and ingredients and pantry staples, but there's also various sections on the history of the brownies, which I found really interesting, including the failed cake. Um, and also one of my favorite anecdotes, which I think you said was one of yours, was um, the one about um, Catherine Hepburn's neighbor. Can you tell us uh, that story? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah. just going to see if I can find the direct quote before I misquote um, okay. Catherine that's Hepburn because okay. she, would, <laughs> she would be so angry at me, wouldn't she? Um, but yeah, the story, oh, here we go. The story, so the story goes is that I think she met, she had like a new, some new neighbors in town um, and the neighbors bought her some brownies and she was like, oh, these are terrible. And she wrote a letter to uh, one of these neighbors. I think it was the daughter. Um, and uh, I think the letter, she gave her these advice, uh, rules to live by. Number one, never quit. Number two, be yourself. Number three, don't put too much flour in your brownies. <laughs> Which I really enjoy. It's three good, I think that's three good rules, isn't it? Three good rules. And didn't the neighbor write that up or submit it to the New York Times? Yeah, yeah, it got published in the New York Times. So yeah, okay. I think you can still make Catherine Hepburn's brand. I think that the recipe is actually circulate, circulate, circulate online. I so, love uh, that. I love that Catherine yeah. Hepburn, that part of her rules of life were um, having to do with brownies. Yeah, yeah, she was obviously quite the connoisseur of the brownie, Catherine Hepburn. You know, she wasn't right. going to we'll eat any We'll have to all brownie. look up Catherine Hepburn's recipe and make them. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's so interesting. Um, so I have my my sort of base with my brownies and my peanut butter. And then the fun yeah. part is the Oreos on top, right? Um, yeah. And you might want to do a little bit of skewering now if, if you want to do a little bit of mixing. Yeah. So you're just okay. kind of giving it a little swirl, basically. Um, oh, this is really good. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I wasn't prepared with my knife because I was getting everything else. In my oh, kitchen. you can use anything, you know, skewer, end of a spoon. I always think use whatever you got to hand. I had to kick everybody out of my kitchen. That looks perfect. My family decides to come and bake and cook right as I'm about to do the show without <laughs> fail. Okay. That's great. This looks really good. Here we go. So I think it's nine or nine Oreos, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, if you, so I always say my brownies, you could cut into nine massive squares if you're feeling, and if you're feeling lonesome tonight, I think, you know, you might want. So nine gives you nine big squares, but you can also if then cut them into six. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can also cut them into like 12 or 16 and cut them a bit smaller and go through the cookie. Um, and by the way, I um, purchased double stuff Oreos. I hope that's okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ooh, I'll be interested it to see what that does. Yeah. We don't have those in the UK. I'm going to have to look these up. Double stuff. Well, it's very US. Hang on. I want to make sure my oven's on the right temperature. Give me one second. I'm sorry to um, do that. Okay. It's almost warmed up. Yeah, no, when you, uh, everyone watching this in America will know when you go to the grocery store and you go to the Oreo aisle, there is double stuff Oreos and rainbow Oreos and <laughs> sprinkle Oreos and mega stuff Oreos. And yeah, you, we just get, we get the plain old basic ones over here. That's it. Um, that's it. So this looks great. Um, I'm actually going to pop it in the oven. For those of you who are still following along at home, you can definitely pop it in. And then we're going to talk to, Leah, a little bit more. Um, okay, mine's in the oven. And you bake it for, what did you say, 50? Yeah, they take a little bit longer, those ones, than a lot of my brownies, I think, because of the peanut butter. Um, but I always say check, like, 10 minutes before with a brownie, because, you know, ovens run so differently. And brownies are quite... Yeah. Um, when I started writing this book, I thought it might be quite easy. I was like, yeah, brownies, kind of easy, aren't they? Um, but actually, they're quite tricky, because, you know, getting that perfect consistency is tricky and people have very different opinions of what that you know how fudgy they should and how set they should be so it is tricky and I always say yeah use you know you if you make enough of them you le you learn don't you when at which point you think the brownie is is perfect you do because I always think the perfect brownie for me at least is like crunchy on the outside but chewy on the inside but it's hard to get it that way yeah 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 absolutely um and everyone will have a different opinion um, right but yeah always so better take it out a little bit before than after I always think but Take it out a little bit for and you and use like a toothpick or a tester to see if it's done. Yeah, well, it's difficult with a brownie because you know, unlike a cake, you can't do the the, the, the obvious skewer test, which is put it in, comes out clean, done. But I, but you can still do it. So if it, if you go if you go in and it's kind of liquid, it's mm -hmm. it's not ready. If you go in and you get kind of like chocolatey crumbs, you know that that chocolate cake kind of crumbs on the on the skewer. I think that's that's that suggests to me that it's a good point. Okay. Plus brownies are a food that everybody's going to want to eat right away. Like nobody waits for them to cool. That And that is the challenge because actually that's so hard to cut. And if you can resist it for a few hours, they cut so much nicer. I do, I do recommend, I do recommend it with mine. And I always say, um, I mean, I always stick mine in the fridge, which not everyone likes to do, but 
I really Thank like that. It makes it kind of fudgier somehow. I don't, it sets it in a really nice way and they slice really neatly. So if you can. Uh, when I was reading your book, I was um, feeling like we have so many similarities based on our taste in brownies. We like them oh. in the refrigerator. We like the fudgy. We like the ends. We could, we oh, could get along really well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to read you um, the little caption about Lonesome Tonight Brownies from the book because I love it. Um, you say a recipe for blue days when you're feeling alone and heartbroken and wish the sofa would swallow you whole. Such days call for a raid on the most comforting things in the cupboard, chocolate, Oreos, and a big jar of peanut butter. This recipe combines all of these indulgences served with Elvis's saddest tunes and a bit of a cry, but ring your mom, mum. You say mom, we say mom. Yeah, yeah. Or your best friend for a chat afterwards. I love that description. <laughs> I really enjoy writing recipe descriptions. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think it's because my background is kind of like I started as a as a journalist before I kind of moved into food. So I always love those. I love. I think it's so an evocative recipe description is is so powerful, isn't it? it makes well, you and to people it. remember it. I think too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I was gonna say was it really fun for you to write the descriptions? Yeah, I think not all recipe writers like doing that bit. A lot of them love doing the recipes, and they're, then they're like, "Oh, now I need to write five sentences about it." But I really enjoy that bit. Sometimes I enjoy it more. Yeah. <laughs> There's no washing up involved when you're doing the, uh, the intros. Yeah, it's really um, it's really interesting. And speaking of your background, um, the Brownie Diaries is your second book. So yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about your first book called Made in London? Yeah, yeah. So that came out that came out in 2018. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, what year? It came out in 2018, so a little while back now. Um, and it's quite different. It's um, a book about London's food, kind of past and present. So there's lots of history in it about like fish and chips and, you know, pies. Um, but then also recipes from kind of like top London restaurants right now. Um, and it's got quite a lot of writing in it, a lot of history. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed writing it. Though I always say it's London, uh, London, I guess, like a lot of cities, it moves so fast that now... If you if you wrote that book again today, you'd put in twenty different restaurants because new things have opened and some things have disappeared. So it's it's only ever you can only really do ever do a snapshot of London, I think. Well, maybe so you have that, to do a volume too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could do a book that big on the food of London. I mean, enormous. Same for New York or any any big city, I guess. For sure. Um, and how has the reception been to the to the Brownie book now that it's out? And like, tell us about some of your events you've done, either you know in person or online stuff like that yeah people seem to have been enjoying it I've really loved with this one actually more than the last one I think I've been getting a lot of kind of like Instagram pictures coming through and Twitter pictures and seeing people make them is really nice and um especially I like seeing when it's successful you know that lovely papery crust you get on brownies which mm -hmm. is just you know the best thing um I really wanted like the, the the earliest recipes in the book the kind of core recipes like the triple chocolate brownie to have, to have that in a foolproof way. So whenever I see a picture that someone's made that brownie that's got the crust, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's people, worked for them. <laughs> people watching should definitely follow you on Instagram because, I mean, you you look at your Instagram account and you just want to make the brownies and eat them all right away. <laughs> yeah. Taking a lot of pictures of brownies recently. But yeah, no, it's been fun doing events. Um, and it's been fun doing events with the US, which I didn't do for the last book. So um, it's been really nice. And right. America is the home of brownies. So, you know, it's... Uh, Look at that. We're the home of brownies. I you don't are. Think I can... Yeah. It's, it's nice to chat to you guys. There's a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. Well, they're definitely one of the easiest desserts to make and so much fun too. Yeah. Yeah. They are. I think they're like indulgent, but also really accessible, which I really like. And yeah. They, they kind of, they have that balance. Right. Um, are you working on a new book or, I mean, I know you're busy with your day job. <laughs> You could tell us about it as a food writer yeah yeah so I work for a uh food magazine uh in the UK called Waitrose Food which is published by one of our, our big supermarkets so I do that as well so I have to admit that I haven't started uh thinking about anyone too much yet but well we'll see I, I've got a few ideas but yeah this one this one did take it out of me slightly <laughs> right I'm sure it has not to plant your head with ideas but it got me thinking about not to give you advice but it got me thinking about the brownie idea diaries I feel like there could be the cookie diaries and the kick di like there's yeah so many. yeah 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 my, I have been discussing with my husband we were like oh what would the natural sequel to this be and I think it would have to be the cookie diaries wouldn't it that feels Definitely. like the the obvious the obvious that would, one. Be, that would be so fun to um taste test for I'm available <laughs> excellent <laughs>
And you can um, definitely um, come back on the show when the cookie diaries come out for sure. There actually, <laughs> yeah. there are some brownie recipes in here. I think there was one that's like similar to a cookie, right? Or, or yeah, you- there's a, yeah, like a brown, there's a, uh, oh, <laughs> there's two recipes. There's like a brownie cookie. So that's like somewhere between a cookie and a brownie. Oh, it's just like a really gooey, moist a cookie. Brookie. That's lo- Yeah, basically, that's lovely. Um, but yeah, there's also a recipe called cheating on brownies with cookies, which is uh, brownies with a layer of cookie dough on the top, um, which is super indulgent, but really nice. I love that. I'm just going through this book. There's one called I Like to Recycle Brownies, which is spent coffee and condensed milk. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I really like this. I love condensed milk. It's like one of my, oh, if, if that is open, I am going to be there with a spoon. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to do a recipe with condensed milk. So um, I was I was pleased with that one quite tricky to do a layer of condensed milk in the middle but if you refrigerate it beforehand then it kind of thickens and it it, yeah it'll hold I love condensed milk too um you also say did there's a recipe for did I mention I can't eat gluten brownies so there you you do have gluten-free brownies in here yeah there's a gluten-free one and there's a vegan one so I wanted to put in like a couple of solutions for you know when you've got people around and then you're like oh but the good thing is that brownies lend themselves really well to special diets actually because you know they're not like a cake because they're not like a cake they're quite dense I think you can get away, you don't need gluten quite the same way you do for like a sponge right. cake. Um, so ground almonds, which I think I use in that, in that recipe works really well. Um, and same with vegan, you know, oil works really well instead of butter um, in brownies. And even some of my non-vegan brownie, uh, you know, in the book I use oil in because um, it, work, it works well for certain things. Um, I think- I mean, I was gonna say, because I kind of feel like in all these recipes or many of the recipes, instead of using traditional flour, you could use gluten-free flour, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. That would be it. That would be an easy swap. Um, and I use a lot of other flours too in the book. You know, I kind of really like kind of like using like spelt flour and rye flour and some of those kind of interesting old grains. Um, so it's always worth experimenting with flour. It shouldn't affect the recipe too much. I don't think if you try a different flour. Right. Okay. And they bring different, they bring different flavors, you know, kind of nuttiness you get from those kind of more wholemeal flours. And you know what? I there's so many allergies these days and there's a lot of peanut butter allergies. So I'm sure you could do this with like almond butter or something else, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah. You could use any nut butter, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can smell my brownies baking in the oven. They smell so good. Um, I wanted to see if we had any um, audience questions at all at this point. Is there any? Um, oh, we got some questions already. Um, what brand of chocolate do you use? Do you use unsweetened as well? And what about Dutch processed cocoa? Oh, lots of good chocolate questions. Mm, good questions. Um, yeah, so in the UK, I, I use what we call dark chocolate. I don't know what that is in the US. Is that bittersweet, I think, possibly? Um, um, well, in the US, we have, we have so many options. Yeah, you you've know, got more options than we do. I we know, have like yeah. dark and milk. <laughs> I know. We have dark chocolate, we have semi-sweet, and we have milk. So, oh, interesting. Um, yeah. um, well, I would in my in, through, through this book I used um 70% cocoa solids dark chocolate was what I used um because I like my brownies quite kind of you know I like the taste of chocolate um so that's what I go for something with 70%ish cocoa solids I think you could go a little bit lower if if that's your taste and I don't think it should affect it too much um cocoa's interesting because we don't have a definite difference in the UK we just have cocoa powder basically and it's not identified whether it's dutch process or uh or the other one um so I, I think either would work from from what i know of cocoa powder um i think I, I if you came it. over to the u.s and when you went to the store with us you'd be like oh my gosh there's so many yeah. options it would yeah. be great i mean going abroad and going into supermarkets is like one of my biggest pleasures you know if i ever go to france i'm like oh you have such different things right it's so funny i studied abroad in abroad for me which was in london um oh, nice. year and um I remember going to the grocery store and loving um, all the different options over there and particularly like the candies and the chocolates and the cookies. I found that. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. To, it's so fun to go and try different things. I know. It is. And I sometimes felt like they were more healthy, but they weren't. You know, like if it's a different brand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of that cookie right now, um, but it's really good. <laughs> oh, digestive. Oh, digestives. Oh, that that's basically a health food. Like. Right. But then when you douse them in chocolate. You may be less so then, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, the clues yeah. in the name. I think they were like, you know, invented as like, you know, for the digestion. I think that's right. where the name comes from. They probably were, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, so it is fun. That could be, a, that's another interesting thing to see different, um, you know, recipes and um, stories kind of from abroad and, you know, kind of harkens back to what you did for the um, the the book you did about Made in London, which sounds so yeah, interesting. Yeah 
we have to go check that out. Oh, yeah. Dude. Um, do we have any more questions before we talk? Oh, what is your, that's a really good question. I have so many pans in my pantry. What is your go-to baking pan for making brownies? Um, I use a kind of thin, lightweight, pale metal pan is, is my go-to. I find that that cooks the most evenly uh, for me, much better than glass or ceramic. So that's kind of what I tested all the recipes in the book in, uh, and that's what I like. And one that's like spring release is really useful as well, just because it makes it easier to get. If you can get those, it's easier to get them out. <laughs> Do you Especially if you're glass? eating them warm. Okay, what do you use, you use a glass pan ever or? You can do one. I just I just find that they're not quite as, they don't cook quite as evenly, I, I don't think, um, right. for, from my experience. But I know they are really popular. So by all I means, know, just it might mean that you have to do five minutes less or five minutes more time. You know, you know your oven, you know your pans. You know your oven and you know your pans. I find that I have my favorite pans. And oh, everyone does, right? And I oh, I reuse the, the one I'm using right now is my favorite, obviously. <laughs> But if that's in use, I have to go back and, you know, when I get to the yeah, bottom yeah. of the pile, I'm like, oh, I guess I'll use this. Yeah. Yeah. I did the book in two. I had two tins that I tested most of the book in and I'd often have like two batches going at the same time. But I was always like, I always much prefer to use my favorite one. I'd be yeah. like, oh, that one. So you did all the testing and all the baking in your home kitchen? Well, we just moved into our new house, which has, I mean, we've, we've actually, funny enough, we've like now done the kitchen and now I've got like two ovens and it's really nice and I keep going. It would have been so nice to have done the book in the book in this kitchen. But instead I did it in like our old kitchen, which was like 20 years old and had, you know, this one creaky little oven. So it was it was quite hard going. That's so funny. But I, we managed it. I we actually redid our kitchen last summer in the middle of the baking show and I was it would have been nice to have this beforehand too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I often find you can do bake you don't need a big fancy kit. Like you can do it. People, it's amazing what people do in tiny little kitchens, I always think. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You don't need a lot, do you? You just need, yeah, your favorite pans and an oven and yeah. that's it. And very basic equipment. Like for this book, I didn't want to have to make people have loads of fancy equipment. You know, it's kind of, you need a bowl, you need a, you need a spoon, uh, a tin. You don't need much else, really. Well, that's the thing, really. I just used some bowls and spoons and whisks. I mean, I didn't even use an electric mixer. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a couple of recipes in the book. I always think if you want that crust that we were talking about earlier, that perfect mm -hmm. papery crust, um, a whisk is, an electric whisk is really good. It seems to create some sort of, I don't know the science of this, but create some kind of like, helps. some people say it's like a meringue layer almost. Yeah. Um, but you still can do it by hand, you know? You just have to do it a little bit longer and longer and faster. Right, no, it feels good to use all the basic stuff. You don't, you don't. You oh, got, it's so nice. Yeah, there's not, something about it. Intimidated by all the fancy equipment. But in this book, you definitely don't need it for sure. No. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if we have time for a few more questions. If not, oh, we have so many good questions. What do you use instead if you're of eggs if you're a vegan? That's a really good question. Um, yeah. So I usually use um, linseeds or flax seeds. They go by both names. I'm sure you guys have those in health shops as well. Um, so if you do those and you soak them in a bit of water, I don't know if you ever use them, Rachel, but they go kind of, I don't want to say frog spawny, but they, they kind of get this like gummy quality once they're soaked in water. And if you use those in baking instead of eggs, you'll find like some exact measurements on the internet if you want to look it up, like one egg equals one teaspoon or whatever. Um, they kind of work a bit like eggs. They kind of set, help set the brownie. Um, they're really good. Um, so I recommend that, linseeds or flax seeds. Do you ever use applesauce? I've tried that before. Do you know what? American recipes use applesauce a lot. And again, in the UK, it's just not something we use. It's really yeah. interesting. I, whenever I see it, I'm like, applesauce? Like, we have that with roast pork. That's so <laughs> I'm like, funny. I'm like, you is know, that the same applesauce that we use? You know what like, I do? Job? If I don't have eggs or if I'm baking without eggs, I, I have, when my kids were younger, I used to have those little applesauce packs that they would take to school. And I just happened to know that um, you throw that in, in whatever you're baking, and that's the equivalent of three eggs. Interesting. Oh, I'm gonna that was my little tip for a really long time. I used to do that, and I wouldn't tell my family when I made them with applesauce, and nobody ever said anything. I wonder I'm what just... it is about applesauce that makes them helps it. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I mean, I'm I learn it, something new. I think it makes them stick together. So there's a there's a baking tip from our from the host, I guess. There you go. <laughs> Two baking tips for for eggless baking. Yeah. No, we're getting such good um, baking questions. Um, do we have any more questions? I don't want to keep. Oh, do you ever, oh, do you ever add espresso or coffee to bring out the chocolate flavor in your brownie recipes? Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually. Um, you don't have to use an awful lot, but if you just use a little bit, you can either use, um, you know, espresso powder or you could use like a, a tablespoon of actual coffee. Um, it doesn't make it taste of coffee necessarily, but it just somehow those kind of 
toasty kind of nutty notes bring out the chocolatiness um when you think about it like chocolate and cocoa um not sorry coffee beans and cocoa beans you know they're quite similar things really they're not but you know what i mean like they're both kind of like beans that you find they don't taste very nice for themselves and they go through this kind of process like fermenting and roasting and then they turn into coffee and chocolate but they've got kind of a lot of flavor profiles in common right they um, do so kind of i had a author on the show a few weeks ago i think it was where we made um toffee bars and um it was really just they kind of got that toffee flavor from the brown sugar there was yeah like, we put some coffee or something like that in there but we didn't yeah Mm. Well, brown sugar is mm, brown sugar is so good for that toffee flavor. Um, I, sugar's another fun thing to play with in brownies. You know, I think you can, within reason, always swap white sugar for a light brown sugar or a dark brown sugar. Um, yeah. and they'll bring kind of they will bring different notes. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of brown sugar in um, brownies. A lot. I mean, particularly yeah. like blondies and stuff. Yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown sugar and blondies definitely go well together. I think we might have time for one more question before I talk about what's coming up next. Do we have one more? If not, oh, that's all the audience questions. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Our producers behind the scenes are so good at filling me in. So um, Leah, this was such a pleasure having you. We learned so much about brownies. I wish you could all smell what's going on in my kitchen now because it's truly amazing. But um, people should definitely go and check out um, your Instagram for sure. Um, and they could, you know, purchase your book. Um, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Oh, I have one more question actually, because it is independent bookstore day. Do you have a favorite independent bookstore either in the UK or the US or a few? That's it. Yeah, there's a few. Um, there's actually one just down my road, which opened during the pandemic. Um, bless them. Uh, it's called Four Bears. Um, and it's just ran by a local guy. But he always has a really good selection in there. Um, and I, it's just so nice to have an independent bookshop down my road. So I'm going to take I'm going to say that one. That's great. Okay, well, for our, our, our viewers in England right now, they can check that out. But for people, you know, making a trip over, you know, people are back to traveling now. They can check that out too. <laughs> uh, I did want to tell you that at our next baking show, this is for our viewers out there. We're having on, actually, this is another. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, this is good. That's you know this? Yeah, yeah. They're amazing. So this is actually a father daughter team also in England. Um, their yeah. names are Kitty and Al Tate. I love this cover. I love this picture. And their yeah. new book coming out is called Bread Song how baking changed our lives. And it's really a wonderful book because it's filled with great recipes, a lot of bread recipes and other recipes, but it's um, it's kind of about how baking impacted their lives in, in more ways than one, which I think Leah can say, I'm sure you could attest to that, how much baking has changed your life, it's changed my yeah, life. It's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's got an emotional force, isn't it? Baking? Yeah, so we'll just tease it with that. But I will tell you, we have chosen the recipe. Again, I was like, it's. It's like picking out candy in a candy store. I don't know what to choose, but we're going to be baking um, caramelized banana bread, which I'm so excited oh, nice. about, which you can make with nuts or without nuts. So more on that on, you know, Mighty Blaze social channels. And I also wanted to tell you what's coming up this week on a Mighty Blaze. We have an awesome week ahead um, on the Thoughtful Bro. These are all of our other shows. Um, we're having on Steve Allman, Crime Time. There's two shows this week, Carter Wilson and Amy Impelizari. Um, on Authors Love Bookstores, which by the way, Authors Love Bookstores um, is our show where uh, we highlight independent bookstores and authors, and they just celebrated their two-year anniversary. This week, we're ha they're having on Sandra Block, on Debut Spotlight, uh, Boris Dralek, um, on Zeitgeist, we're having uh, Nima Avisha, on Lit Chick, Amy Runyon, on Friday Frontliner, that's obviously on Friday, Chris Bolajan and the special cocktail event on Friday night with Sarah McCoy. So that's all in one week. Um, you can see um, all of our great shows. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at a mighty blaze. And you can check all these shows out this week uh, live on a mighty blaze Facebook and on Twitter. And if you can't be there live, you can also watch it on YouTube. So I know that was a mouthful, but we have to promote all the blaze because <laughs> big family. Thank you so much, Leah. We really Thank appreciate you. it. And I'll be thinking of you when I, when I make these brownies and when I send them to Jenna as well. So <laughs> thanks so much. I hope you enjoy them. Bye.